am Ambassador Sujay, and welcome to Conversations with Ambassador Sujay. We are here in the village of Sag Harbor, the town of East Hampton, and it's my delight and honor to have with me our first guest, and you are? Bill Pickens from Sag Harbor Hills. Um, I've been coming to Sag Harbor for 75 years, wow. so this is really my home away from home. Well, it's such a pleasure. When I first came 23 years ago, we're newbies here. Um, you were one of the first people that I met, and you have been just so gracious. You're called Mr. Mayor. You're called Mr. Godfather. You're called Mr. <laughs> <No other thing. laughs> <laughs> <Just love> you, <laughs> so when did your family first start coming to San Barbara? I had an aunt, uh, her name was Anna Hawley. She started coming here in 1908. She was a teacher at Tuskegee for Booker T. Washington. Uh, although she grew up in Maine, she wound up in the South, oh. and she taught English. Uh, she was a four foot nine Terra. Wow! Uh, and uh, she came to Sag Harbor uh, with some uh, had heard about it with some girlfriends, and uh, settled here on Hampstead Street. Wow! In a, in a tiny house with an outhouse. Wow, I remember the outhouse. I, I was from Brooklyn and Harlem, and I was not used to that. I, I know. That's a, I know that's that was how we began our family uh, sojourn in this wonderful village. So how many generations now? Was your aunt, and then how many generations? Well, it's, it's a six generations. Wow, that's amazing. That to be six to her, yeah. And now you live in Sag Harbor Hills. Yeah. Tell us a little history about Sag Harbor Hills. Well, Sag Harbor Hills uh, was uh, commissioned in 1950. Okay. Uh, and uh, it was a developer uh, who came along with his wife, who seemed to have the money, and they owned all this land. Uh, I don't know how many acres there were originally, but it was a waterfront property, uh, and it was uh, for sale. And my dad heard about it because we'd come, been coming out here for years. Yes. And Azure Rest was already in place. Okay. Uh, and we knew about Azure Rest, so uh, uh, my father came out and uh, followed a, a bulldozer. Uh, to the house that we uh, still own today. Which is awesome. And he asked the guy, who, for whom are you doing this? And he said, well, it's my spec house. No, uh, it's going to be the model house. So my father just called some to I bought it. And now you're the model family yeah. and the model house. <laughs> <laughs> so now we got this letter, I mean, from the park, from the Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. Uh -huh. Please to designate <laughs> us as a historic place. What did you feel like when SANS started and when you received your letter? Well, I was very proud of that because it, it establishes us as a, a community of substance and history uh, and dynamism. So uh, that designation by the state mm -hmm. uh, honors uh, our heritage and uh, our sense of belonging and entitlement uh, and love of this place. What's a highlight for you, a historic moment that you remember from childhood up to, to adulthood, what was something that was a highlight that stands out for you? Well, the Sag Harbor Initiative. Okay. Uh, which That's was named by my late wife, Pat Brannon Pickens. Mm. Uh, that was 1986. Wow. It was a high watermark for, for sort of the intellectual uh, thrust. Uh, we had Bader Dan and Dr. Rowe and Eleanor Holmes Norton and oh Andrew, Andrew Biddle Duke. And all these folks came to Sag Harbor, this little village, right. Pearson High School. And, and uh, we put this on the map from an international perspective. Yes. Guys like Jay Bruce Llewellyn. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh, yeah. I went to school with his daughter. And old Brucey, yeah. yeah. My dear friend. Uh, and that uh, made Sag Harbor uh, a place of intellectual ferment, One. which was uh, a little different from the past history. Wow. Uh, which was fishing and farming and, you know. Well, show us some of your pictures. You have some of the history. Oh, that's, that's a photograph. Here's a picture of um, my family, a bit large. Uh, we uh, love this. That's uh, beautiful. At, at my mother's and father's home, which my daughter now owns. Uh, and uh, we were all gathered here for a family celebration. Uh, and uh, it was kind of nice. All the generations. Wow. Uh, me that being a so senior. In this yes, one. okay. And uh, my brother in law, Buddy Brannon, retired United Airlines captain. Really? And he was probably second in line in this in this group. Okay. But uh, those are all, my, all my relatives. Let me see some other photos you have. I just interviewed sure. Eleanor Holmes Norton, by the way, right. in Washington, D.C. Eleanor, Eleanor, yeah. Long, long Another class. Here's, uh, here's my old uh, childhood friend, Colin Powell. Oh, my goodness. Uh, okay. We used to ride our bicycles around here when. <laughs> I was 13, he was 12. Oh my goodness, what a shot. He still calls me Billy. 
All right. We were on it together, the 100 Black Men, mm -hmm. and he was the first White House fellow from the Bronx, and I was the second. Yeah. Hello. So he was really kind to me, very kind to me. So what else well, you well, have? Well, we were kind of mad at him because he was <laughs> hanging out with our girlfriend. Oh, okay. Well, that's something. <laughs> he and I didn't discuss that. <laughs> Yeah, here's just a picture of me when I was a sort of young business executive, uh, handsome man, coming out to play over on weekends. And what was your first field? What was what were you in business doing? Well, I, I started in uh, in the consulting business, mm -hmm. the, uh, first for AT and T, and then for Booz Allen Hamilton, and, uh, and I had my own business for many many years. Wow. Uh, an international business. Wow, and Reggie Van Lee. I traveled the world. Yeah, Reggie Van Lee, a dear friend, and he yes. was at Booz Allen. Yeah. I was there long before Reggie. Yeah, he knows that. But he, he also dedicated the bench that we sat yeah. on. And he yeah. brought me golf. Yeah. We're responsible for yeah, that. Well, he's, he's an old friend. Oh, he's awesome. Here's an event we, as at, uh, was at Alma Brown's uh, and late Ron Brown's oh, home for the president. Oh, yeah, with Bill For the Clintons. Oh, that was uh, about, uh, well, I guess 12 years ago or so. Uh, wow. she, she made me running for the Senate, I think, at the time. Yes. In any event, but, awesome. but Ron and Alma were childhood friends. And, uh, awesome. And in fact, Alma was my first girlfriend. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> What's that you brought up, Ron? <laughs> Let's kind of talk about that. And we're sorry for your loss, Jimmy. How many years were you and your wife married? 51. Oh, my goodness. What would you say to, because you have a lot of generations now coming, some are marrying for the first time, some of us are hoping for a second time, but what would you say in terms of love, in terms of dating, mating, and relating, what would you look for now in a spouse? Well, if I could uh, Xerox my bride, I would, <laughs> that's what I would look for. But I'm saying for traits, for people who are coming up now, what do you say are the traits that a good partner possesses? Well, uh, honesty. Okay. Uh, a sense of uh, dignity. Uh, and a sense of uh, who, you know who you are uh, as a person. Okay. Uh, your your so spouse, people your spouse doesn't have to make you yes. what you're not. Right, right. <laughs> if, if you've got talent, if you've got your own personality, your own drive, your own skills, that's important to me. So two holes coming together, no that's one's right. making you whole. That's right. What are you most hopeful for in America? Well, I hope that we get uh, some political leadership that we can uh, admire, because we're admired rather than admired. You know? uh, so I think that uh, I hope for uh, a bridge of surgeons of a Barack Obama type, uh, someone who can establish us in, in leadership, integrity, and intelligence. Okay. okay. What would you say to the SANS leadership who helped pull all of this together? Well, uh, Renee, yes. uh, and, and, and uh, her husband uh, did a great job of organizing this. And they built a new company yes. to our community, I think about 13 years ago. Yes. But uh, they put up the flag and said, uh, you know what, we've got to protect this place. Yes. Because it's irreplaceable. You're not going to get another, say, Harvard Beach Fund community anywhere in America that's not owned by the government or by corporate America yes. uh, or by a farm. Yeah, so, uh, so we need to protect this. Uh, this is God-given, and uh, we, we strove many, many years to make this place what it is today. It was, uh, we felled the trees uh, and uh, paved the streets. So here we are wow. in 2019, enjoying this village uh, with our families and friends wherever we are. So from dirt roads to paved street, from an outhouse, <laughs> we hope to get someone <laughs> else at the White House. <laughs> so what, one last word of advice to, if you look straight ahead and say, sure. a word of advice just for the people of San Barbara, our wonderful village, what would you say? Well, I say uh, let's hold on to this uh, God-given land uh, pay, and pay our taxes because the tax burden is increasing. It puts a lot of strain on families who are middle class or uh, upper middle class. Um, and, but we can do that if we're politically savvy uh, and uh, vote for folks who, are, who share our uh, desires and values. So, won't you join me in thanking Mr. Bill Pickens? Thank you for your wonderful time. You're awesome. You're a handsome man.
your hands are now. <laughs> and I want to thank you for just being who you are. We love you and we really appreciate you being part of our village and thank you for receiving us into your village. So you're welcome. You're welcome. This is the Conversations with Ambassador Sujay Sands, leader and icon, Mr. Bill Pickens. Thank you for joining us.